Hello and welcome to this short video tutorial regarding high voltage power supplies of Isaac Spital Electronic GmbH. My name is Stefan Jok and I am one of the sales engineers at Isaac. Today I would like to introduce to you the high power units of HPS series. These units are available with output powers of 300 watt, 800 watt, 1.5 kilowatt, 3 kilowatt, 6 kilowatt and 10 kilowatt. They are available as 19 inch rack units with heights of 1U, 2U, 3U and 4U and not shown here there's also a 6U unit with implemented filament power supply and also a half 19 inch unit 2U with 350 watt. The available output voltages are in a range of 1 kV up to 100 kV. Each unit can be operated in voltage or current control mode and is available as either a DC power supply or a capacitor charger version. Through that the units can be perfectly adapted to applications such as electron beam and ion beam applications, plasma creation, capacitor charging and many more. Depending on the configuration the units can be controlled via front panel, analog I.O., USB, Ethernet, GPIB or CAN interface. In this video I want to focus on the front panel control. As you can see during the initialization process after power on the unit is showing its type number, serial number and the firmware version used. After init is finished the unit is going into setting mode which is indicated by the small s in front of the voltage and current display. For each setting, voltage and current, you do have a rotary knob which is at the same time a push button. If you turn the rotary knob slowly, the changing steps are small. If you turn them fast, the changing steps are quite high. The unit used in this example has a maximum voltage of 20 kV and a maximum current of 150 mA. So it is possible to set the output values with a resolution of 10 V and 0.1 mA. After you have set the desired values, you can start the unit by pushing the on-off button on the left. You can see that the small s indicating the setting mode is disappearing and the unit is slowly ramping up. At the same time, the LED CV indicating the voltage control mode is turning on. The voltage ramp used now is pretty low, but this can be changed in the settings. Each unit is equipped with a kill enable function, which is activated by the second button from the left. If kill enable is activated, the unit will switch down as soon as it reaches the set output current. By pushing the on off button again and pushing the button local menu, you can get into the unit settings. By pushing kill, which is at the same time the escape button, you will get into the display mode where it's showing the unit's actual output values. Within the settings menu, you can change values for voltage limit, current limit, voltage ramp, current ramp, how to start, which interface to use, which instruction set to use, the base address of the IEEE interface, the base address of the CAN interface, if the unit shall send an echo, several settings for the arc management, you can set a password and you can decide if the display shall show the output current or the output power. The first two settings are voltage and current limit, with which you can decide values which cannot be overrun by regular control via the front panel or the interface. You can enter a specific setting by pushing the rotary knob for voltage. With the same rotary knob you then decide for the value you want to use and you accept the setting with another push on this button. For current related values you have to use the right rotary knob which is labeled with current. The next two settings are the voltage and current ramp with which you can decide how fast the unit will ramp up or down in voltage mode or current control mode. The next two entries for auto start are not available for some units such as this one. Details regarding that can be found in the manual. If the unit is equipped with this functionality you can decide here that it automatically ramps up after power on. In entry number 7 you can decide which interface you want to use. Of course the unit has to be equipped with the specific interface. In entry number 8 you can choose the instruction set. Basically there are three different command sets available for remote control. Details regarding that can be found in the manual. 
In entry number 9 and 10 you can change the base address for the IEEE and CAN interface. If you use several units and they have the same base address there will be malfunctions. For example it is possible to operate up to 64 units on one CAN line. In entry number 11 you can activate an echo for the remote control. This means that the unit is confirming a command you sent by sending it back to the computer. Entries number 12 to 16 are related to the arc management if the unit is equipped with this functionality. Entry number 12 is to activate or deactivate the arc functionality. This specific unit is always activated, therefore entry number 12 is not shown. In entry number 13 you can specify a number of arcs which are accepted. If this number is reached the unit will shut down. In entry number 14 you can change the time frame for the accepted number of arcs. In entry number 15 you can specify a wait time for the unit before ramping up again after an arc. And in entry number 16 you can specify a voltage ramp the unit is using when ramping up again after an arc. Detailed information about the definition of an arc, basically a very fast discharge, and the different settings you can change here can be found in the manual. As you can see here, for the ramp up after an arc you can set very very high values for the voltage ramp. Before changing any values here, please make sure that your application will not be damaged by the settings you have chosen. Please do not hesitate to contact our support in case you need help to choose the correct values for your application. In entry number 17 you can decide for a password, without which you cannot change any of the settings you have made before. Please make sure that you not do any accidental changes here. And finally in entry number 18 you can decide which value shall be shown, output power or output current. If you decide to show output power, the unit will change from milliamp to watt. Many thanks for watching this short video introduction. Should you have any questions regarding the units or their control, please do not hesitate to contact us by any of the means given on our website www.isaac-hv.com. Thank you and bye bye.